Hey, problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I was gonna go over how to graph sine, cosine, and tangent in Google Sheets. It's a spreadsheet software. Uh, the only thing that's a little tricky is going from degrees to radians. So I'll go through that. We'll set up data points. We'll find the sine of those angles, and then we'll graph them, and you'll see how that T-bar translates into a graph and where the sine, cosine, and tangent graphs come from. So if you're new to this channel, think about subscribing and I'll put the camera over my shoulder and we'll get started. So this is a Google product. You could just go to the wafer up here and select Google Sheets. I'm gonna start a brand new Google Sheet. So I hit blank. I'm zoomed in pretty far so you could see it. The very first thing I always do, I title it. Um, I'll title this trig functions or graphing trig functions, something like that. Then I go over here to share, and then I share it uh, with everybody in my district or with everybody on the web, whoever you want to share it with. And the, these things right here are called cells. Going up and down are columns, and then side to side, these are rows. So in this cell right here, I'm going to title this my independent variable x. And then this is going to be titled sine of x. And then I'm just going to pick some degree measures. I'm going to start at zero rotate around the Cartesian coordinate system. So I'm going to rotate around. I'll pick zero degrees, 30, 45, 60. They don't all have to be exact values, but I am going to pick my quarter value. So 90, 180, 270, and back to 360. 110, 135, 150, uh, 180. So now I've rotated 90, 180. 200, 225, 250, 270, 300, 320, and we'll say 360. So I just have some degree measures here. One thing, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we can see the whole thing. I'm going to highlight all of these cells right here and beyond, and then I'm going to center them in the middle of the cell a little bit easier to read. And then the titles, I always bold. Now I wanna take the sine of theta here. So the way I do any equation is I always start with an equal sign. And then I wanna take the sine of an angle, but Google Sheets only allows you to take the sine of an angle if it's in radian measure. And if we haven't talked about radian measure yet, that's okay, I'm just gonna show you how to convert it to radians and maybe I'll do another video on radians. So I wanna take the sine. So I just start typing in the word sine, this will pop up. And then after I take the sine, I wanna convert the angle into radians. So I start typing in radians. And then it's gonna say, what do you wanna select in a radians? I'm gonna click on this cell. It didn't pick that value, it picked that cell. Then I'm gonna close that parenthesis and then close the other parenthesis and then hit enter. This will autofill it, so I could hit autofill. Or if I don't want to do that, I could just click on this cell and then drag it all the way down. Same outcome. And, and you'll see here, if I click on this cell right here, it'll have picked up the equation from this cell, but replaced my independent variable with this value. And my exact values I could see, I know that sine of zero is zero, sine of 91, sine of 150, that's a 30 reference in the second quadrant, it's 0.5, so I recognize these. So now that I have my values and sine of those values in a converted radian measure, I'm gonna select all of this right here, and then I'm gonna go to insert chart, and there's my sine graph right there. I could move it over. So that's how you create a sine graph in Google Sheets. I'll do a cosine graph as well. There's a lot of different settings you could set here. Um, you know, and, and really this might not be the best graph, but we'll keep it. I'll delete that. Now I'm actually gonna go back and retitle this uh, cosine of X. And this will be how easy it is to change this right here to a cosine graph. So I'll type in 
cosine and there's my cosine function popping up. Whoops. So I'll have to drag this new equation down through all these. It resets it with cosine. I'm going to go back and select all of these. Insert chart. And there's my cosine graph. So that's how you draw a cosine graph in Google Sheets. And then I'll go ahead and escape out of this. Okay, and then the graph tangent. Tangent's going to be a little different because the problem of tangent of 90, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite will be 1, adjacent 0. So tangent at 90 is 1 over 0, which is undefined. So we won't really be able to graph it. But if I want to find those tangent values, I'll double click in here. I'll type in tan. And then I'll double click on this equation and I'll change this cosine to tangent. I'll just start typing in the word tangent. That'll pop up there. And then I want to copy these values down through here. And then it'll re reprogram it with tangent. And you can see right here, y is equal to tangent in radian mode of converting that 60 degrees. Right here at 90 degrees, this is actually exponential notation, 1.6 times 10 to the 16th. Based on the programming of the software, it won't actually quite get to infinity. It'll approach infinity, but never quite get there. As I graph it, that would be my asymptote. This would also be an asymptote. And I can see that it actually cycles in 180 degrees. So it repeats itself every 180 degrees. I don't think I'm going to insert a chart here because it has these undefined values, but graphing tangent on paper and pencil, you would put in asymptotes at 90 and 270. It would go through the origin. It would approach 90, get closer and closer, and get infinitely close as it approaches infinity. And then between 90 and 180, there would be negative values. And then between 180 and 270, back to positive, back to negative values. All right, well, I hope that helped graphing sine, cosine, and tangent in Google Sheets. Google or spreadsheets are really powerful software. They're pretty much part of any job. Um, so hopefully this was helpful. If you liked the video, hit like. And thank you for watching.